under the scope. Hey, scope of dopes welcome back to the Fall Film Flam. We're looking at our first possibly significant snowfall of the season, and what do you do when the snow comes? You go see movies, and that's what we did. We went and saw an advanced sneak peek of the latest Alexander Payne film, Nebraska. With me, guest host Earl, say hi. How you doing, man? You haven't seen him for a couple weeks, but... Last time it was kidnapping. So. Yeah. This time's a little bit more, well... No kidnapping. I won't say happier fare, necessarily, but uh, definitely no kidnapping. So... Bittersweet. <laughs> Bittersweet, indeed. Like the candy we got from Halloween two days ago. <laughs> uh, Nebraska, as I said, is uh, directed by Alexander Payne. It stars uh, Bruce Stern. Bruce Stern, Will Forte. Will Forte. June Squibb. Who Peter Travers is madly in love with. <laughs> we had a little Q&A afterward. And Peter Travers revealed his secret love for June Squibb. Uh, <laughs> Bob Odenkirk also shows up. And then there's a bunch of other... Stacy Keach. Stacy Keach and a bunch of locals showing up. What is this film about? It's a film about an old man who <laughs> wants to do one last thing with his life, but he's not all there. But, you know, subconsciously and instinctively, he knows he's got to try one last thing. I'm going to take the Peter Travers route. I'm going to spoil it because <laughs> yeah, if you're coming to watch this... Can we tell the Peter Travers story? Real, real quick. Go ahead. Anyway, here's the thing. The deal is they got this deal where they televised the interview with the actors before and after the movie. And Peter Travers... Um, I'd spent the whole day, like, I got this surprise invitation today. I'm just like, all right, I'm not going to find out. And I know nothing of this movie, never heard of it. I'm going to just go into this movie nice and blank because I just want to be hit with the full force of what the movie is. A little tabula rasa action. Peter Travers shows up. That He's accident. introducing it now. He's introducing it. And instead of saying, welcome to Nebraska, and this is great for... No, he goes, Nebraska, it's about A, B, and C, and man, it's great because he ends up doing this. <laughs> you know, and you're just like... Fuck you, Peter Travis. And we weren't the only ones in the audience who were upset with this. This oh, was. And, <laughs> and a point of a clarification, he wasn't actually in person. He was direct via was like via internet video feed, but satellite. still, yeah, I don't, yeah, sure. Satellites might have been involved. Anyway, so uh, we will take the Peter Travers route, and we will spoil it. Uh, Bruce, no, no, just we're just going to give a, 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 a brief plot. Bruce Stern plays a character named Woody. Woody. Woody is uh, probably at the end of his life, pretty close here. He's older. He's not like you said. He's not quite all there. He's kind of drank his life away. He drank his life away. He's you know. But he's not. Not too. He's got some some regrets thing. in life, Don't but family, you know. he's also a gentleman who tends to believe what people tell him and what he reads. He's and an honorable man. And so he has this letter from Publishers from clearing, a from Publishers a clearing more or less Publishers Clearinghouse. It's not specifically that, but yeah, from a sweepstakes style company out of Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, that says that he may have won a million dollars. Uh, all he has to do is return his uh, his letter to them, uh, and if his and if his number matches, he could win. And he does not trust the U.S. Postal Service with such a right. uh, 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 important. And as far as he's concerned, he's won. He just got to get to Nebraska. Right. So he uh, he has he sets out on foot a couple times. He literally and gets brought back home, and finally, uh, his son, played by Will, Will Forte, Forte. Uh, David. Uh, reluctantly decides that okay, we're gonna we'll take the road trip. We're gonna go. We're gonna because go to literally Lincoln, Lincoln, Nebraska. Nebraska. Said, what do you got going on? And he's like, yeah, his life is crap too. He's selling yeah. record players. <laughs> <laughs> and then he's got this uh, crazy girlfriend. I don't know if she was crazy. She nah, she's she not the only thing. Not even important to that. Yeah, so yeah, they yeah, so, yeah. so they hit the road and What's and uh, uh, through a series of unfortunate events, they end up kind of waylaid in a small town, Hawthorne, Kansas, and where. That's where he, where uh, where uh, Woody grew up, where uh, family, is. family is, they stay at People his his brother's house, I believe yeah. it was, and so we spend the kind of the middle chunk of the film in Hawthorne, kind of recouping in Middle America, basically, kind of seeing what life was like, and this sort of ends Getting up to know him. ends up being kind of a, a a way for Woody to sort of kind of look back at who he was and sort of maybe make. But kind at the of, same time, Will Forte starts to learn about his family, exactly. why, th why things are the way they are. And, then, you know, him, everybody except Bruce Stern is, you know, they're like, you can't do this, it's crazy, you didn't win, it's a scam. You're like, I don't want a million dollars, I'm going to go get my million dollars. But then it leaks out that maybe he is a winner, and so the, and some no, some some of the, the badness comes out of the woodwork. People oh, yeah, want the, some money. And the best line is usually people wait until they're dead before the vultures come out. Uh, you, yes. you lot. Eventually, uh, uh, David's brother, um, what was his name, Ron, Russ, something like that, I don't Bob know, Play, Oldenkirk. played by Bob Oldenkirk, and, uh, and mom, Kate, played by June Squibb, uh, come, come out to Hawthorne as well, it's a big family thing. They try to make a reunion, and you, to at least do something right. with the situation. And you really get this kind of, this portrait of middle America, uh, and that's probably all the plot details we really need to get into. Yeah. Um, 
so let's start talking about the film like what we thought of it I, I enjoyed it uh, I have to admit it was weird in the beginning it's filmed completely in black and white black and white so if black and white's not your thing it should be you your should thing try to give up that. that prejudice I mean why are you why are you against black and white why are you racist wow you had to go there anyway film anyways uh you know, in the beginning, I thought they were making fun of, like, independent filmmakers because everybody delivered their lines really weird in the beginning of the film, but then it kind of smoothed out. I would say that throughout the film, there were certain scenes where the, the dialogue delivery felt stilted in, in what I felt was more of a stage performance style. Yeah, they, 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 it's almost like you said, hey, you know how everybody in the first film just kind of doesn't quite have that timing down yet? Do that. And, and Yeah, well, I think... I, it, it felt deliberate to me. It felt like yeah. nobody was going to talk over each other because it might have been impolite to do so. Right. There was a lot of, of people being polite to each other uh, nice. in this film. So I think maybe that came from that. But yeah, some of the dialogue occasionally felt like it was like a stage performance. Yeah. Um, very deliberate in how things were delivered. Um, way, not necessarily bad. Just a very, no, I think it was a stylistic yeah, choice. Yeah, and then after a while it kind of smoothed out. But yeah. it almost felt like, it's, you know, it was like that was the inside gag. But then you realize it's not a... It's not that kind of comedy. For me, this was definitely this was this was a uh, this was not a film about the story. This was a film about the characters. Yeah, uh, it was definitely a, a slow pace, uh, which is perfectly fine because we're, we're kind of like you said. This is this is a story about Woody sort of going back home again and sort of. Uh, discovering or kind of reacquainting himself with who he is, where he came from, for good or bad. Um, and also his son David finally getting to spend some time with him and sort of seeing yeah. who his father was, who he's become, um, you know, and possibly a look into what his future might be if he yeah. things go a certain way. So um, I don't know about you, but, you know, me having lost my father uh, over a decade ago, you know, I got I got little feels. I did too. In the film, I, I it was like father for years back, and so I, 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 that's what I meant. You know, you and I, I think are suckers for the uh, father son type movie. Yeah, I mean, I, you we know, even like that. What was that? The uh, the firefighter who could talk on the radio and go back in time to his dad. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Was that frequency? Frequency. I think that was it. Yeah. yeah that, we both dug that one. I sort of, you know, I sort of have a, uh, you know, I guess an element of my life where I didn't have. Uh, always a close relationship with my father and then I lost him and I, I can't get that back so right. yeah you know it is what it is and you know I'm always getting you know another one that gets me of course is uh Magnolia oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah yeah the father-son movies really definitely hit me in the feels box I'm gonna coin that phrase the feels box yes, you, uh, you so that. I have a little soft spot for this film already and uh uh, it definitely has a sentimentality to it, but I don't think it's an overwrought sentimentality. I think it's the the it's the right it's balance. Very well balanced. It's very well. It's paced the way it needs to be paced. Uh, yeah. Whereas like a film like About Time also did uh, the father son relationship, but I thought that was a little bit more on the schmaltzy end of things. So <laughs> that's a new word. I don't know. But uh, you well, go go check out my review of that. I was uh, impressed with Will Forte's performance. Yeah. Let's talk about the performances overall. So Bruce, you like Will Forte? Bruce, Bruce Dern. Fooled you because after the interview, <laughs> after the movie's over, we literally wanted to see the interview just to see if Bruce Warren was in that bad a shape. Yeah, has he really gotten that old? Because he plays some pretty serious old in this yeah, film. Yeah, he's got a crazy walk. I have not seen that well of a walk kept since Snake Plissken got shot yeah. with the arrow and escaped from the just, And he's just got this demeanor of just someone who's just, he's in his own world, contemplating his own things, yeah. and really couldn't care less about and he hold, anything I mean, else that's no going on around him. It's so natural. I mean, we were like, we literally had to see if he would like that. And yeah. No, he just moved turn. Yeah, he's, he's a chatty fella. Uh, so, Will, Will good Forte uh, managed to get through the film, actually telling little jokes, but not being his weird self when he did. You know, yeah, no, it felt really natural, and it felt like just like whatever whatever quips he had felt perfectly acceptable uh, for, in the circumstances. There was no winking and nodding. Exactly. Even Odenkirk managed to be understated, but I've seen him do serious before because yeah, I, I watch Breaking Bad. Who so. would have thought that guy, the yeah. man who brought us Thumb Wars, <laughs> an annoying orange, I think. Yeah, he, and Mr. Show, and, and but he's done some crazy, crazy comedy stuff. But yeah, he can definitely do a serious role pretty well. Yeah. And June Squibb, come on. At first I thought she was going to be like just sort of the standard caricature of an overbearing uh, yeah. wife she mom. She nails it out of the park, though. Uh, <laughs> she sort of comes out, you know, sort of bitchy and, and kind of picking on her husband, like, oh, you know, you don't do anything. If you run a million dollars, why don't you work hard for it? Blah, blah, blah. But then 
once she gets into Hawthorne, she just totally flips the script and is Takes the, over. kind of the heart of the movie. She'll probably know. get an award for one particular line, which I shall <laughs> not say here. Uh, she did, yeah, she totally. That, but that's the charm of this film. Yep. You you learn about people as it goes. It's, and, and it's done nicely. It's not, there's no big stinger like, see, we, we led you this way, and then you find out he's really this. Indeed. And it's like, no, you get to learn. It's like hanging out with people and getting to know them. And I really enjoyed some of the sort of the uh, the, the extended family characters. Oh yeah, they were great. Um, and some of those people I know from my own life. Yeah, same here. It's there's a lot of uh, of you know weekend in the in the in middle America at, at the farmhouse. There's a lot of you sit around, mm -hmm. and there isn't a lot said. You know, everybody's there and together. Everyone's there and together, but and it's like, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing good. Yep. You know, every, it's, there's not a lot of elaboration, and that's just that. I that's how I remember it from growing up. And that's uh, yeah, so, same, yeah. That's why I'm looking at half the family. Like that. That's where yeah. my sister. I, I grew up. I grew up visiting my grandparents with the farm folk, and you know, their extended family would come over, and I just remember it was a bunch of old people sitting around, not saying a whole lot, but you know, being perfectly but, pleasant and just happy to be in the same room, I guess. Yeah, and there you go. Yeah. So it's pretty good. I really, uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this film. Well, I should probably give this a score. The Scoop score is three and one half stars. So three and a half, we are in agreement. Three and a half. Nebraska from Alexander Payne. Uh, it's in theaters November 15th. I think, yeah, it's yes. in two weeks. 15th, I believe, Peter is the Travis date. Peter like, oh my god, two weeks before it comes out, we're I, special! Well, he cannot wait for us to see June Squibb the way he does. I tell and you that. The side note, I started noticing it during the after interview, because the first thing he goes right to June Squibb, and then when Bruce Dern played a joke saying, oh yeah, June Squibb was a stripper one, Peter Trevor like, really? This, is, I, this I, is all great extended content for the YouTube audience. <laughs> anyway, let's wrap this up. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, if you're uh, listening at home, share this with a friend. If you're on YouTube, give us a like, a comment, maybe even subscribe. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. Days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying arrivederci. Tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope.